Let's bring in Greg Cosell from NFL Films and ESPN. So the simple question is the most well, important. Dan, before you ask me, it's NFL Films. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that. What did I say? ESPN. Oh, no, I gave you NFL Films. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> NFL Films uh, slash the mothership. <laughs> so you're talking about quarterback uh, statistics, are the you? The most important quarterback stat, aside from wins and losses, is? Well, I think there'd be two, but it all flows from traits. But the, the two quarterback statistics would probably be third down and red zone. Because you third down, you keep the football, and red zone, you score touchdowns. But the reason why guys are good in those areas is because of quarterback traits and attributes. Those things don't just happen on a whim. The least important quarterback stat. The least important quarterback stat? Oh, I don't think in those terms. So I, <laughs> I don't have a good answer for that one. Well, what, what, is, what is something we value that maybe we shouldn't value as much? Well, tell me what you value. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't, I just think of it in, in terms of when I watch tape and what I see as important, and I'm always thinking in terms of traits and attributes that lead to consistent success. Okay. And, and it's just obvious that third down and red zone, and, and, and those are cliched but true, because obviously you need to possess the ball, and what does everybody say when you get to the playoffs in particular? You need to score touchdowns when you get into the red zone. And there are certain traits and attributes that go with that, and it's one reason why now, design of, of plays, obviously, very important. Concepts, very important. Coaches can help with that. But ultimately, let's say you're talking red zone. You've got to be a really quick decision maker. You've got to be willing to, to make tight throws. You've got to be precisely accurate. You know, the ball placement has to be really precise. So execution comes from attributes. But red zone and third down are critical. Yeah, I didn't know if interceptions, because if I look at all these you know, quarterbacks. Uh, it, it, interceptions to me, and, and I've, I, I look at interceptions. Interceptions are case by case. You know, people will throw out, oh, he threw 17 interceptions. That's too many. You've got to look at each individual interception, because you've got to understand why those occurred. And there are certain quarterbacks based on design and concept of, of, a, of an offense that are likely to throw a few more interceptions, you know, uh, you know, the Andrew Lux, the Carson Palmers, when you're constantly driving the ball down the field and making higher risk, more difficult throws as the foundation of an offense, often you're going to throw more interceptions because they're more difficult throws. So you've got to look at each individual interception to see why it occurs. What about yardage? Yardage is tough because yardage then you have to look as to when the yardage happens because very often you could see quarterbacks throw for a lot of yards in the third and fourth quarter if their team is down and the balance in an offense goes out the window. And it's not that the yards are necessarily insignificant. That might be too strong a word, but I think you have to put them in a context and a framework. So when you see a guy, you know, if a team loses 38-17 and the quarterback throws for 390, you know, that's not the same as maybe a quarterback throwing for 270 and he threw for, you know, 180 in the first half and they're up and then the second half the game changes. So, you know, again, everything to me is context and you need to put it in a, in a framework. Uh, before I let you go, if I'm a Bronco fan, what are the positives that you maybe saw from Peyton Manning last week? I thought for the most part, he threw it to the right receiver. He threw with good timing. Uh, one of the things that's overlooked, I think, is that he's not throwing with the same precise ball placement that he did in his prime. But I thought for the most part, he threw the ball well, particularly early in the game. The ball came out with some pretty decent juice for him. And uh, I, I thought he played consistently well in terms of decision making. He did not make any throws where you went, wow, ooh, what's he doing there? And, uh, you know, so I think that has to continue. I mean, they can win this game with defense and a turnover-free, consistent offensive performance. Uh, before I, uh, Paulie just asked me a question, which quarterback had the best season? Regular the season. Best season? Yeah. In your opinion, was it Cam Newton? Well, I think what Carson Palmer did is really hard on a weekly basis in that offense. I think the kinds of throws that he was asked to make and made a week in, week out, quarter after quarter, are really high-risk, high-level NFL throws. And playing behind an offensive line that's not great and being in empty sets more than any quarterback in the league. Greg, thank you for joining us on short notice. Dan, appreciate it as always. Thank you. All right, that's Greg Cosell of NFL Films and ESPN.